Well, we're still at Disneyland. <laughs> we sure are. And on Sunday, I said we were going to put to rest a controversy about this boat. Oh. <laughs> now, we did that show earlier, the Walking with Walt series. Right. And uh, episode two is the history of the riverboats at Disneyland. Neat. And we caught a lot of crap from a lot of people oh, dear. <laughs> in the comments as it happens when I said that the paddle wheel on this boat is always in motion and they simply control its speed with a brake because it runs on a track and, and it has a brake. And I thought that they controlled the speed that way because if you observe the boat, the paddle wheel never stops moving. Right. Well, uh, I, I asked the, uh, the operator while we were there exactly what goes on and he explained the whole process and it's a little more involved than what I thought it was. Oh my. But only a little more. Just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. So just to recap on a couple of things, this is an actual steam-powered riverboat. That is just awesome. Uh, built right here at Disneyland for Disneyland by Admiral Joe Fowler. Oh. Isn't that neat? That is awesome. But Disney always wanted a riverboat and by gosh, he got one. He sure did. And it belonged to him, not to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and as I mentioned, it runs on a track. That's just, that's so neat. So when the river is drained, which happens every once in a while, you can see the guideway that both this and the, the big sailing ship Columbia run on this guideway. And that does all of the steering. And both boats also have a brake so that they can stop the boat by simply get, uh, grabbing a hold of the guideway with a brake oh. and stopping that way. Hmm. Very important thing to be Absolutely. able to stop. <laughs> and so the boat is actually propelled by its paddle wheel oh. and it can be reversed if necessary and the speed can be controlled by operating uh, what on a locomotive would be called the Johnson bar. So just like the locomotives, it runs on biodiesel, oh. essentially French fry oil. There you go. <laughs> And the boiler is located at the front of the boat. So it doesn't require a fireman? Nope. So the reverser is here, the Johnson bar, if you will. It's at the back of the boat. And all of the motion of the boat is controlled by the reversing lever. The throttle is this valve up here. And, and it's, all, it's just opened and then left in a position for the rest of the day. They don't have to adjust the throttle ever. Uh, they might make minor adjustments as the day goes along, but for the most part, the throttle is just left open and the speed is controlled by the Johnson bar. That's cool. So just like on a locomotive, if this bar is moved all the way forward, that's maximum power in a forward direction. As you pull it back toward the center, you're simply reducing the amount of torque until you arrive at the very center, which is neutral. Oh. And the wheel will simply stop because it no longer has steam going to it. Pull it all the way to the back and it'll reverse the wheel. So what they do is as they're pulling into the dock, the operator will pull the reverser to the center position to slow the boat a bit. And then just about now, He's reversing it to create maximum braking force. They're not using the brake on the track until the very, very end. And if you'll notice, the pilot up in the pilot house at the top is waiting for the boat to be perfectly aligned with the dock. And then he's going to operate the brake that will lock the boat into position. At this point, the engine operator pulls the Johnson bar all the way to the rear position and notice that's causing the wheel to turn backwards. Oh, wow. And I asked him why they do that and he says that keeps it tight against the brake and ensures that the boat doesn't move around. And then when they're ready to leave, he simply shoves it to the front, the wheel starts turning forward, and the boat pulls out from the dock. Wow. Just that simple. That is wild. <laughs> Simply can avoid running 
so means the water here is two fathoms deep. That means it's safe enough for us to proceed on our steam-powered journey along the rivers of America. On our trip, we'll visit the magnificent Columbia of the Great Northwest, the graceful Missouri of the Winston Trail, and the rugged Rio Grande on the border of Mississippi. That is so cool. Now, as it happens, they wanted to have a complete second boat on the rivers here. Understanding that this was going to be an incredibly popular ride, they thought, well, let's have a second boat, but let's not have another river boat. Let's build a giant sailing ship. Oh, boy. <laughs> so they constructed the three-masted ship Columbia. There it is. And the original intent was to have both of these boats on the river at all times. But later on, they thought, you know, we, there's going to be a lot of times when the Columbia is just going to be in the way. So let's just park it. When we're not, when we don't need it, we'll just park it. Right. Every time I've been there, it's always been parked. That's typical. Right. <laughs> so we had to go for a ride on it because they don't run it all that often. Mostly it's parked over in the area affectionately known as Fowler's Ditch. <laughs> Since Admiral Joe Fowler built the boats, he said, I can't just build them out on the river. I need a proper dry dock. So they ditched it. So they ditched it. <laughs> they dug a little channel off to the side, and they called that Fowler's Ditch, oh and that's where he constructed the boats. Well, then when they decided that they needed a parking place for the Columbia, they just park it over there in Fowler's Ditch. Well, there it is. They never filled it back in. The plan was to fill the ditch in and not have it. But instead, they build a whole little village around it, which they call Fowler's Cove. Oh. I guess they decided Fowler's Ditch is kind of a bad yeah, name. It just doesn't sound very good. <laughs> well, now, since these two boats run on a track, how do you get the Columbia over into Fowler's Ditch when it's hooked to this track? Well, that means you've got to have a switch track, Ooh. points as it were, ah. to switch that over so that they can pull the Columbia into Fowler's Ditch over here. And while we were here, they were going to pull it out of service, which again is pretty typical for it, and they were going to pull it into Fowler's Ditch here. And since that was something we wanted to see, mm -hmm. we grabbed ourselves a couple of uh, frozen bananas right. and sat at a table over here and waited for them to pull the Columbia into the ditch. Right. And it's also a really fun place to, uh, to explore. Just Fowler's Inn. Hang out. <laughs> hang out over at Fowler's <laughs> Cove. Well, we hung out and we hung out and we hung out. And it's like, the ship is just parked out there. Yes. Why aren't they pulling it into Fowler's Cove? It got stuck. Oh, my. So it was stuck out there for about 45 minutes, and I asked them, I said, what the heck went wrong? And they said, well, the switch doesn't always work really well, and it got hung up on the point and jammed. And so they're running the, the diesel engine, the biodiesel engine in this thing, forward and back and forward and back and forward and back, trying to clear the point. In the meantime, the whole ride had to be shut down. They didn't get a deep sea diver with a hammer to get down there and bang on the mechanism. That would have been best, I think. <laughs> anyway, by reversing the motor, they were finally able to clear the jam and pull the boat into Fowler's Cove. There it goes. And put it away finally. for the day. <laughs> Well, there you have it, setting the record straight from our previous video about how the, the mechanism works on the riverboat. Yes, for when your ship comes in. <laughs> for when your ship comes in. And speaking of your ship coming in, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, or for that matter, a member, you can either become a member or just simply subscribe, starting by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday with another show. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>